Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Peter Pamiati of Human Art Studios and this is Making Comics and Art, episode 276. <laughs> I believe, I believe. So, um, got this piece, I penciled it up and I'm going to proceed to ink it. Um, this was sort of a thing I did previously on this channel uh, where I made six different versions, printed it out, and yeah, went in with marker, went in with pencil, and just tried to visualize it uh, differently at times and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to use this as reference to proceed going forward. That over there. Yeah, let's see. No, that won't work. That's good enough. Okay. I can see it. It's off off uh, off camera. <laughs> All right. So how's your day so far? How are you doing? Are you gonna work with me? Work while I work. I certainly hope so. Um, so yeah, today is about goals. How how to reinforce your goals? Um, I have a number of different ways. Uh, you know, it's it's sometimes it's about motivation, and and while I'm <laughs> kind of sort of always motivated by money, like we all want to make a, a, a good living have a good life. Um, I'm not directly motivated by money. Um, unless, you know, <laughs> somebody sends me money and I guess I'm more motivated to uh, work on that piece than something randomly that I'm not making money on. But I'm more motivated by uh, setting a goal to, to you know, work on something and finish something um motivated by you know my friends and fans and family uh that want to see something or another um but it's really how i structure my day um okay so i'm talking and not working so let me figure out what i want to do here all right so i decided I am going to go with the darker water, kind of like that. And I'll do a little halo around the figure. Define this a little better. So, there. Yeah. yeah, so I find what helps me is people, for sure. Uh, like, people who follow along what you're doing and want to see artwork or projects finished. That's definitely a motivator. Um, but just, yeah, friends who kind of remind you of what you should be working on. Um, you know, I, I lost my very good friend, and she was a, a big supporter, and, and, and we always sort of caught up on, on our days today activities and um that's a powerful thing in my opinion like when um somebody just wants to know what, what you're what you're working on what you're excited about
and and sort of keeps you on track like you know like this other thing that you're working on is really nice and all but but you did want to get this more important thing finished whatever you know let's see that one will be So I mentioned because I'm not such a, a tight penciler, um, I'll tighten it up as I go. Uh, but because this isn't totally finished pencils, it, it's a lot of wiggle room as to what I want to do. Let's see. So this is water. This is water over here. So yes, some of the things that works for me is yeah to have people in my life that that keep me on track. Um, you know, I, I'm susceptible to things that happen throughout my day and interactions with others influence uh, my direction. And so there's, there's programs available, um, tracker habit tracker is something I, I've used in the past and I'm going to get back to using it. Um, uh, let's see habit tracker. T R E. K-K-E-R. Um, it's a little app program. Hey, Charles, welcome. How's your dates today going so far? Uh, so, yeah, Habit Tracker is a really good thing, and, and you really have to clearly define what it is you want it to track. Uh, you know, I use it for even the simplest things of, like walking. Like I want to walk for 30 minutes every day, you know. And if I got chores, then I'll naturally go take a walk to the store, or, you know, the convenience store or much farther out, like the grocery store, Walmart or, or Kroger or what have you, or for any supplies, Home Depot or something. Um those are going to be longer walks or maybe I'll, I'll get a ride and, you know, but still I'll be jumping around town a bit, but, um, you know, I, I do walking for exercise. So at least 30 minutes a day, um, go to a post office, go to a library, go, you know, even just grab a, a cup of coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. Um, <laughs> Charles says, not too bad. It always gets better when I'm watching my wife. Awesome. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here, buddy. I'm glad you're here. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's good. It's good to keep track of um, making sure you exercise every day or, or every other day. Uh, but I also do it for reading because uh, – Reading used to be a regular thing, and now it's more something I have to force myself to do. Uh, I say that because, you know, I can get lost in my schedule and completely drop things like getting a good amount of sleep, a good amount of exercise, and interacting with friends. <laughs> um, so let's see. This is... Do, 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 do. All right, do. Throw some down lines down here. Yeah, so if you're watching this and you don't know, um, 
I want to be doing more of my own art. So this is why uh, I penciled this Aquaman piece. This is 10 by 10. I'll be doing a whole set of these over time. And this is because I want to be known more for doing my own art as well as selling more of my own art. And I figure if I do more popular characters, then uh, be more, more likely to sell than just random, you know, things I come up with out of my head. Uh, at least that's what my art rep tells me. <laughs> so I am available uh, if you like my work and, and you want to commission me to do something, I mean, I'm, I'm available for inks. i um, been doing a lot of covers, so you, you know, definitely hire me to do covers or pinups. Uh, but also, you know, I'm, uh, I'm willing to take on a, a book or two. Um, you know, my, my page rate is 75. My cover rate is uh, 125 but that goes up depending on what's on the cover if it's a single figure and simple background that's 125 if it's two figures it's more if it's detail highly detailed background that's more you know stuff like that eh, common to every artist you hire um but i'm also available if you want me to pencil ink the cover you know what have you do, 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 do. But yeah, habit tracker is something I've used in the past, and that that's highly helpful for me to keep track of um, what I want to focus on. Because you know, my brain goes a thousand different places, <laughs> and it's easy <laughs> easy to. Uh, lose scope of uh where i am and where i want to go so charles says i totally appreciate all comic artist drawers that's where i get my inspiration to create comic book characters mostly superheroes as wwe created wrestlers that's right if you go check out charles reeves on youtube you can check check out his work um so yeah it's 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 super easy to get off track. Um, and lose scope. So you gotta have you gotta have things in place to, to keep you on track. So habit tracker is definitely one of one of the things. Another thing is something I've learned of recently called Notion. Uh, Notion you can it's it's a variation on what I use Trello, a program called Trello. Um, and it's really easy to dump everything into Trello or Notion and, and you know, lose focus. <laughs> but I want to, I want to, I got a, a ton of stuff on my Trello, so I want to keep notion very specific very geared towards some things i want to achieve um now mind you my my schedule is as follows like um i'm working on whatever i could accomplish until the end of november and then i'll be sort of gone i'll be in florida Currently, you know, I'm living in Kentucky. Um, so I'll be in Florida for a couple of months. In that time, I'm not going to be doing artwork or at least nothing on um, schedule. Uh, so it's whatever I can accomplish between now and, and then. Uh, then I'll be... Uh, with family, so I'll be uh, focused on that mostly, but I will attempt to uh, write a novel, figure something with outside of my normal deadlines. Uh, I've always been interested in, in 
writing and, and specifically writing novels, highly influenced uh, by Stephen King. So it's going to be a horror novel. Um, I didn't think it would be, but... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, you know, so if I haven't mentioned it already, this is on bristle paper. It's 10 by 10. Um, you know, I'll cut it down a little bit there. Uh, and I'm going to be doing a whole series of these. I'm starting out with Aquaman because I'm mostly known for inking Aquaman. Um, but I'm going to dive into a lot of Marvel characters, specifically X-Men, which I'll never run out of characters there. <laughs> um, Avengers, that's a core, uh, all the single-ish, single characters they have. There's a whole slew of male and female. And creatures and whatnot. Uh, but I also do other characters outside of Marvel, like, you know, some DC characters, but also um, independent characters like image characters or Dark Horse characters or just strictly self publisher characters. Um, I was on Apex uh, Comics Group, Comics with an X. Uh, not too long ago, and he is a really interesting character that I want to draw. Really like the design of it. All right, so I'm going to start mapping out the figure and sort of the line work I want to do there. Boom, boom. boom. Okay. Yeah, so because I'm, I'm, you know, not a hardcore penciler yet, um, my, my pencils are pretty loose going in. Uh, but I hope over time to tighten up my pencil work. Um, you know, it's like I don't have to since, you know, once I get to issue two of, of retro, my, my own character, and... Going forward, I'll be penciling and inking and coloring and writing as well. But, uh, you know, I don't have to do super tight pencils, but I want, I want tighter than I normally do. All right. Um, so yeah, like I'll be selling these pieces for only 30, 30 bucks, uh, each. Um, like I said, if you want, oh, when I'm making, or you want to commission me to do a specific character, then by all means, um, And I, you know, it's like I, I got some comic work to work on, but nothing's a super rush. Uh, this weekend is going to be New York Comic Con. And, you know, we, we had the designated crowdfunder, which failed, you know, uh, but we're, we're going to revisit that. Uh, but currently, Mark is going to go to New York Comic Con and see if uh, a publisher wants to pick us up and if that happens that that's great um that will be uh effective <laughs> that will that will definitely uh get us moving forward but if not you know then we're gonna 
revisit crowdfunding and we have a better strategy next time around. Um, you know, I, I do want to get as much of retro done, which is why I finished the Gath Gretzky piece uh, the other day, which I posted around. Uh, really happy with the way the piece came out. Um, you know, I, I mentioned not too long ago, I, I, I spoke with Scotty Watson. So Scotty's going to be doing a pinup with retro. Um, and his character Talon, and that will be one of the prints available to all the people that pledged, and also when I do a Indiegogo campaign. Um, you know, I'm kind of thinking at this point in time that I'll do an alternate cover for retro issue one, you know, maybe I'll just keep it down to one or two. And uh, Charles says, it says any of my creator aid wrestler videos you want to use to promote your drawings, feel free to do so. All right, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, I, sh I should mention, I am streaming also later. Um, speaking of designated, I, I, I still have yet to get to um, is there's going to be a bunch of uh, trading cards with that project. And I got one penciled by CB Smallwood that I'll be inking. So if I can uh, find the artwork to that and print it out. Uh, then I'll be working on that later. Um, which, you know, I think I know where it is. <laughs> it's my, I got a lot of files and a lot of things going on. I'm just trying to move forward, move forward on a bunch of things, but I like, I love, CV's uh, pencil work, very 90s image style. And can't wait to uh, ink that piece of one of the uh, designated characters. Let's see. And I got one that I'll be drawing and inking myself that I should be getting to, too. It's James Gagai. What's the haps? <laughs> thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, thank you to my new subscribers. My, my channel has uh, gained a bunch of subscribers recently. And, uh, you know, some people watch live, like for now, like now. Uh, some people watch it on their own schedules, you know, like me, it's, it's like they, I, I play videos when I'm not streaming, uh, so I can feel like I'm, I'm working along with somebody. So, uh, my lines are currently coming out sort of grayish I really don't mind um, you know I spoke about ink I use and, and uh, how it's not as jet black as it once was but pretty much when I scan it I can darken it all you know I saw a original artwork by Mike McNoah years ago and, and it's like it was hellboy art and it was as gray as gray can be and and yet you know i also looked at the the finish art in in the comic and 
that was jet black. So you can pretty much with art programs and everything, scan it and make it exactly what you need it to be. Sure, it's an extra step, but you know, also gives you more control on what the final art looks like. Um, if anybody's seen the uh, Dale Ke Keon piece I inked, um, I actually noticed with that that I made it a little too light. I, I saw that some of my line work was missing <laughs> from the final scan piece. Um, <clears throat> but it looks it looks it looks fine. Uh, just some of the detail was lost. Uh, but it's always it's always getting the right exact balance uh, with which I haven't mastered but uh, doing it more and more I'll become more fluent in it uh, so yeah what I'm doing is just mapping out where I'm going to be filling in a lot of black um, so there's all this water behind him and I just have some line white lines going through it uh, what I'll probably do once I get towards the end of, of working on the piece, um, you know, the very edges of the water, there'll be more spray. So what I'll do is, is I'll get this. This is white ink. Um, uh, some white acrylic in uh, pen form. And I'll just do like dots and, and whatnot uh, on the edge. So it looks more like spray. So yeah, um, because I'll be going in February, I want to see if I can pretty much tackle everything um, but coloring on on the first issue of retro and if I can accomplish that then I can focus on learning uh, procreate as well as better learning um, clip clip paint stu clip studio paint I believe it's called <laughs> Uh, I got that program and both of them, I want to use both of them, you know, for different things. Like certain things are easier in some art programs than others. So a balance of the two, I think I'll, I'll get the kind of coloring mix I want with retro. It's going to, it's going to look very, very much like an A's comic maybe a little fancy work here and there, a couple of colors blending, you know, maybe for skies or whatever. You know, if there's tight light sources, some glowing kind of things, but nothing too, too fancy. Uh, I liken it to uh, like, cartoons like animation like to where they have they have the like okay imagine i'm coloring this piece you know you, there's a lot of flesh so you get the the medium flesh color and then you throw down a darker flesh color and you do sort of the shaded dark areas and then you throw in a lighter flesh color so there'd be three different levels of flesh maybe even a fourth with you know if it's bright bright light source nearby or reflecting off the figure or whatever so you know maybe maybe everything won't have four sort of variations but 
some will yeah at least what i where i want to focus the eye and yeah it's for for all my years and working in comics and for other people and seeing how my work has been colored <laughs> i definitely i definitely know things i don't want to see which is i always want to see the artwork like i put all this time <laughs> and work into uh inking a book i don't want to lose the line work so definitely you know burying uh the drawings with layers and layers and layers of, of colors is not something i'm looking to do now you know there are all types of colors and there's all types of approaches and and i like some of the more i I'll, i will say it as heavy-handed coloring um i like some of that and but i want to you know it's like i, I want to start with basics and, and work towards getting more elaborate coloring going on um you know I'm, I'm learning a lot as i go like this this is the sort of constructing my first uh comic and you know i definitely have a lot more to learn Let's see. So give this. I should really do this with ruler. <laughs> but I'm just sort of mapping it out and I, I can go in and tighten it up after the fact. Uh, which is why maybe that's why I'm a, a slow inker. It's like I I go over lines. I go over and over lines. Because <laughs> I like to see them super, super clean, super tight, super precise. Never, never settle for mediocre quality well, always want to give it my best and I'll be you know I'll have more sort of metal, metal lines on the hook. I'll do more of that when the time comes. But yeah, habits, like, it's like every day, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good working with others and working for companies and working for publishers and, and like, and just following along, like, I got my skill and you want me to do X, Y, Z. So it's easy to just keep focused and, and do X, Y, Z and, and keep on track. But when you're working for yourself and, and you know, th there's nobody working for themselves that doesn't have a hundred different things to do, you know, um, there's, there's creating the artwork, but there's also sharing it and promoting it online and, and, you know, doing streams to promote such things as well and, and messaging people and, you know, so you want a whole lot time and space for everything all right so next how much it is do i want to fill in black i 
All right. Do a little bit here. You know, it's funny. I, I, I was just making a comment which I made a post recently talking about, you know, Stephen King has always stated that he 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 writes for four days for four days for four hours a day. And uh, I made a comment like, well, you know, <laughs> what does he do with the rest of his day or so, something of that that extent? And uh some people gave valid answers. You know, he 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 reads what he wrote. He edits what he wrote. He uh, goes in and rewrites, or he's using the rest of the, the day to think of, um, you know, what he want, wants to write next. Um, you know, so like, even though it's only four hours that he's writing. There's definitely um, a lot more for him to do and keep him busy throughout the day. Like he has all these appearances he goes to and book tours and, you know, he's got his website and, and people, I'm sure, come to him every day with stacks of uh, things he's, he's got to focus his attention on, uh, the, the rest of the business speak with the his book editors and publishers and you know where's the game making appearances yada 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 as well as you know spend time with family and grandkids and you know what have you so for me uh like i mentioned earlier i got habit tracker and I'm going to use that in conjunction with uh, Notion. And I think um, I think those sort of setting those up. Oh, there goes the alarm. It must be lunchtime. I don't know if you could hear it, but you get the town alarm going off. Um. So yeah, combination of those two things, as well as really um, really getting, getting together with a small group of friends on a regular basis. And that can mean as a, as a group together or, or individually separate. Um, so my company is me. So, uh, but I am doing projects with a, a few other people. And uh, if I do hangouts like this, but privately, like with them on a regular basis, then, you know, we sort of touch base and, and each do our checklist and, and, and make sure that, you know, what I'm working on this week is important to, you know, what I want to get done and what I want to be known for and what I want to accomplish. So that will be my process going forward to do combination of those three things, you know, habit tracker, notion, and gatherings with certain friends and make sure uh, week by week everything's moving forward. You know, it really, it really doesn't take much. Like, you know, if you, <clears throat> if you say you had a full-time job and you have a family and you have kids and a wife and, or a husband and whatever, you know, um, if you can only afford 45 minutes, you know, like 11 p.m. at night, every every night, then you can make the most of that 45 minutes. 
and you can also have a, a, a queer grasp of exactly how much you can get done in that time. And uh, how, how that can, you know, benefit your schedule. Yeah, you because know, your schedule should be <clears throat> the things you want to accomplish. You know, be totally aware of um, what you want to work on. And, you know, it's like, because people will come at you left and right with advice. Oh, you should be working on this. Oh, you should be working on that. How many times have I <laughs> ran into friends on the street and they say, oh, I got an idea for a comic. I'm like, that's that's great. It's like, for me, I, ideas are like, you know, like water. It's ideas always, always are flowing out, you know. Uh, but the actual work takes <laughs> takes time, you know. So ideas are useless to me, uh, especially other people's ideas. It's like that's what they would like to see, uh, but not what energizes me, you know. Um, and also they don't know the market. Like they don't know the industry. They don't know. You know, they, they may be a fan. They may be collectors of comics, but, you know, I, I being in the industry would know more than, than they, they ever would. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm, I'm sure I can come up with ideas of, of things they should be doing and focusing on. <laughs> hey, thank for it. <laughs> Hell, all of you magnificent bastards. Grabbing coffee. Coffee's important. Always grab your coffee. Welcome, welcome. So, yeah, I went, you know, it's like the easiest way to get off track is to just be open to everybody's suggestions. <laughs> You know, it, it's like, you know, advice is great, like, especially if it's coming from the people you respect, um, you know, it's like getting artist advice from somebody whose work you love, getting writing advice from somebody who's, somebody who's been writing their whole life, and you know, so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, getting career advice on, on what comic you should be making from somebody who, you know, sells ice cream cones. <laughs> um, I mean, they, they may have something, they may like randomly have latched onto a, a, an excellent idea and, you know, not to say that you, uh, turn your head away from from every idea that comes your way but but I, I you know it's like I sort of have a 10 year plan right now and um, three people come up to me with ideas they have for comics to do um, kind of doesn't fit into my next 10 years. So what am I going to do with it? And tank, tank knows. <laughs> Smash that like button and hit that bell to receive all notifications. And uh, subscribe if you haven't. I have a wonderful, wonderful channel. Over 800 videos. All right. Uh, but yeah, it's it's like uh, artists. A lot of artists, and this you know goes for not only 
actual artist, but you know, a writer is an artist in a way, and and somebody who makes music is a is an artist. I mean, to do anything at a at a high level, there's an art to it. You know, you could stock boxes artistically. <laughs> um, but you, you know, you want to always be learning, always be experimenting, and always be doing your best work as best you can. You know, sometimes deadlines, you just got to finish a project and move on. Uh, but you can learn from that as well. It's like, I don't like to rush, uh, but it, there have definitely been cases where I, uh, I did plow through pages and get them done just uh, to get the book as, as a whole done so it can go to the printer and then be published. And there have been cases where, you know, more often than not, I'm like, okay, I could do eight pages in the time you're giving me, you know, from doing some work for somebody. Um, so get somebody else to do the ink, the rest of it. More, more than likely than not, I've done that. Um, cause sometimes I, I just refuse to like, you know, I want, I want to always give people my best work and I know what I could accomplish sometimes. <laughs> It's shaping up. It's shaping up. All right. Should I focus on the hair? Let me focus on the hair. Okay. So if you haven't already seen, I did this. Did a bunch of variations. Shading it in differently. Um, and just picking out little parts of each. Uh, and use, kind of using that as a guide. And uh, hopefully it will be a good finished piece when it's done. I'm not in a rush to finish this, obviously. <laughs> I, think, I think I started this a couple weeks ago. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. So what else is going on? Oh, um, I'm going to mispronounce his name, but the artist that, that like can draw, um, I think he's Korean. I could be wrong. He's Asian. Um, Jin Kum, uh, I'm not even going to pronounce it right. Um, he passed away. That's so sad. Um, He was either late 40s or early 50s. Phenomenal. World-known world artist. Um, and he's been a guest on, on a lot of YouTube channels. Not too long ago. He had a, he had a heart attack or a stroke. Heart attack, I think. He passed away. You know, some artists are like super work super hard and 
it becomes a lifestyle and man and the lifespans are shorter because of it you know me myself i, I try to you know and i know i know as i'm getting older i'm less likely to do you know 18 hour days um And, uh, yeah, I get to a point where I'm like, I'm useless. Like I'm just going through the motions and not actually getting any work done. So, you know, I think max 12 hours is, is as long as I want to work. Um, you know, it's kind of easier, like, just if I'm working for somebody else and they're paying me good money, um, it's easy to sort of shut down a lot of the miscellaneous things I do and, and just put in longer days. If I'm trying to get to a deadline and whatnot. It's a lot hard, harder to balance my own schedule. Yeah, my, my brain always wants to drift. It's like, oh man, I could be doing, you know, like I have this new idea to do some stickers uh, with some sort of sexy punk chicks. And it's just because I want to make more merchandise, you know, uh, as well as have more of my own art out there in different forms. Um, but yeah, it's like ideas like that pop in my head all the time. And it's, I can't, can't truly balance anything if I'm just coming up with new ideas. It's like I got to finish some of my old ideas off. And, uh, you know, it's like, I know, I know there's probably s some people out there going, like, you know, you've been working on your own creator own project for so long. And, you know, you should have been done years ago, which is definitely the case. I should have been done years ago. Uh, but I got to balance making a living. And, uh, you know, like exactly the time I was crowdfunding retro, which is back in 2019, um, I had a, a book deal at the same time and I didn't stress about making, um, making all my money with the crowdfunder, um, and so, you know, it made a couple of thousand, which is great. But if I, if I want to rely entirely on the crowdfunder, it would have had to been past 10,000 for me to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. And um, after, after the crowdfunder was down, done, um, the book deal kind of fell through because uh, the guy who was going to hire me to do that his, his wife unfortunately passed away. She, she had cancer. And so, you know, my schedule was completely blown out of order. Um, and what I've been doing is trying to balance working on the book as well as br bringing in a, a living uh, without taking a day job, I should have. <laughs> if I took a day job, maybe I'd be finished. Hey, Jimmy Reyes. Welcome, welcome. How you doing? You're you're always working on a hundred projects. What are you up to? You're working on your dragon book issue two. If you don't know Jimmy, go check out his channel. He does incredible work. He's the honest I wanna be ish. <laughs> I want to be my own artist, but he's he's got some tight quality going on in his work.
Yeah, people like him or Shelby Robinson. If you don't know Shelby, check out his working channel too. Or Irene. Um, not sure. Irene. Irene Drawers. Vini. <laughs> She's pretty incredible. There's so many great, great creators uh, I've run into in recent years and been inspired by. Um, but, you know, like one of the things that I've, I've said recently is like I, I've been an anchor all my career. Um, and I would have stayed only an anchor if if things haven't changed, but things always change. You know, inking isn't as in demand as it once was, which is fine, you know. Um, so that's why I'm delving into creating a, a bunch of books of my own. Um, you know, it's definitely the way to go nowadays. Um, like Jimmy Reyes has got his own book going on, and Irene has got her own book going on, and Shelby Robinson, and, you know. It's like they they built up their skills and working for other people, and now they're working on their own creations. And, uh, you know, for me, it's like, yeah, you know, it's like I'm known for anking, and that's where my strength lies. Um, as a penciler, I still got a ton to learn. And, uh, and I will, like, over time, I, you know, I've done – Recent years, a couple of short stories. I plan to do a couple more. Um, I'll be penciling my book and learning things as I go. And uh, yeah, I, I plan to have uh, my brother as one of the characters in issue two of Retro. So that that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but at least I'll have reference for it. <laughs> You know, I, I, I drew a birthday card for him a couple of years back. Um, so I, I did get his likeness pretty good. Um, and he's going to be he's going to be the villain of the issue of issue two. That's going to be a lot of fun. <clears throat> and yeah, I get I gotta get you on here, Jimmy. If you're inclined to come on other people's channels, uh, I see you on a, on the bigger other channels, but my, mine's a mine's a tiny little tiny little channel comparison. I'd love to talk shop with you. And Tank, aren't you working on uh, a project of your own? I believe. You know, feel free to, I mean, I, I'm not sure if everybody here has a, a wrench. I can only do that when I'm on YouTube. I'll do it after the fact, but you can, you can promote your projects by name. <laughs> Tell people where, where to find them. Uh, like Charles, Charles was uh, promoting what he works on earlier. I'm always down for people promoting their their stuff. You know, I definitely have been in the, in the chat of other people's shows and talked about what I work on sometimes.
Como esta mi amigo desde Pato Limit of my Espanol. Hey, Ice Queen. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you here. I'm working on my Aquaman piece, my own art. And uh, yeah, I'll be working on this for a little bit, and I'll be working on um, something else maybe when I have uh, Vic on at four. I'll try to get some time in between for lunch and spend a little time with my cats. So they don't go stir crazy and try to derail my stream as it happens. <laughs> if I don't give them enough attention, that's what happens. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, this, this will slowly take shape. Yeah, you know, I like the art to uh, speak to me. It's it's like I allow it to tell me what to do. <laughs> I, oh, ice cream. Okay, let me go back a little bit. Ice Queen says, looks great. Thank you. Uh, Tank responding to uh, uh, Jimmy L. Throw Jimmy's comment. Tank Ferry, doing well, buddy. How are you? Cool, cool. And he says, I'm doing, I am doing well as well. <laughs> LL. And Charles says, uh, it's okay. It doesn't matter how. Small or big your channel is if you draw they will come. <laughs> well, it's definitely I'm definitely getting a, a gang here more than I normally do, but uh, I stream all over the place. I stream at different times, so maybe maybe around now is a good time. Ice Queen says cats are adorable. Most definitely. And Fanta, welcome, welcome. And Charles says uh, that that's him on YouTube. So Charles Reeves on YouTube. Just type in his name. Yeah. Ice Queen goes, hey, Fanta. Take for it. Uh, I like pets. We have a, a dog, some cats, and a few ferrets. <laughs> it's great for teaching the kids a responsibility. Absolutely. Uh, who doesn't love pet, having a pet? I mean, you know, it's like, I, I know plenty of people without pets, but cats, dogs, ferrets. Uh, I, I've had a few friends who had ferrets. They're, they're freaking crazy, crazy. They're a lot of fun. Uh, so what was I saying? Oh, yeah, like, I like the piece, whether I'm inking somebody else or inking myself or, you know, um, let the piece speak to me as to what it wants. What I should be doing, how I, sh how I should let it focus itself. Yeah, you know, it's like I, I've, I've been YouTubing since 2012, something like that. Uh, you know, I started up my channel. Well, I made an account in, in 2007. 
uh, but I really didn't start dropping videos until 2012. Um, when I started up my account, YouTube was, it was way different back then. Um, and mind you, like, it was really confusing <laughs> initially to me. Uh, they, they cleaned it up a lot uh, and made it uh, more understandable. Because I think, I think initially, like if you were, if you were streaming, it was streaming a thing back then. I forget, but, uh, um, if you were watching a video then the comments were, were below the video, I guess like they are now, but there was also like, they had video responses built into the channel i don't know it is like a lot of a lot of video responses like somebody made a video then you do a video response to it and it got confusing where to where to find the videos i don't know it was a weird weird setup and i glad they cleaned it up you know it's, it seems like every every year they're adjusting how things look and how things are designed much, much like everything like Facebook is definitely different than when it started and Twitter is definitely different than when it started. You know, I know they want to add, add things and make the sites better, but they have so many updates on it. It gets confusing. It's hard to keep track of everything. <laughs> No, no, it's not going over. I'm going to be dropping a digital comic on my website real soon. Floppy size for a dollar. That's awesome. What's what's it going to be? What's the name of it? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. That the tank was saying fish tank room was the, the name of it. Okay. So uh, I have two cats in a fish tank room, <laughs> says Charles. Sounds like my kind of room. Yeah, I, I had fish when I was younger. Um, it's a lot, a lot of upkeep that I fully didn't understand, you know. Um, I know I had the obligatory goldfish, but I also had some fancy fish at some point. You get into the whole saltwater fish thingamabob. I'm no expert. I, I did have some turtles as well. Yes, one of them was named Myrtle. Because how could you have a, a turtle... That isn't named Myrtle. Boom, 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 boom. And Ice Queen, Ice Queen is asking what's Tank's website. Uh, Tank Ferret is on Twitter. I think if you just type Tank Fair on Twitter, you'll find um, where he posts. Apex Predator, 0 to 12, Cyberpunk Jungle Adventure. So that's that's the name of your comic, I'm assuming? And that sounds awesome. Love Cyberpunk. Uh, I got some things I'll be... I'll be doing some, you know, one shots at least, cyberpunk ish type stuff. Um, you know, it's always it's always fun to to draw sort of cyber people as well as a kind of world. 
Um, I love what's his name? Uh, Gibson. It's not Mel Gibson. Um, Mike, Michael. G no, I forget his first name now. It's the guy who came up with cyberpunk. Also came up with internet. <laughs> uh, he's, he's a, he's a great cyberpunk writer. Uh, I, have, I have a new book from him. I got a, it's on my reading list. Mm -hmm. And Ice Queen is right. I don't have the patience to clean out fish, but they are awesome to watch. Yeah, the fish are a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of work. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're great fun. Uh, tight fairy art. There you go. And William Gibson. There you go. William Gibson. Uh, is a name I have not heard. Mike Pondsmith is my favorite CP creator. I gotta go check him out. As if I don't have enough to read. <laughs> it's like, you know, I mentioned earlier, like, um, using Habit Tracker, which is a, a an app program to keep on top of my habits. And I have to force myself nowadays to, to read. Because I, I love reading, but unless I work it into my days, I'll go the whole day and not read anything. Um, so, you know, I, it's like, I literally have a bunch of novels I haven't read yet, but more than anything else, I have a ton of comics, at least a hundred, not even counting the PDFs on my computer. <laughs> and speaking of sinners, it's Mav. The singular. Welcome, welcome. And thank you for it. Pod, Podsmith created the Cyberpunk tabletop games that the CZ Project Red 2077 game is based off of. Oh, excellent. Oh, definitely check him out. Um, I haven't played that, that uh, Cyberpunk 2077 game um but i have watched a couple of playthroughs of you know not not whole playthroughs but uh, i've watched some people playing the game for some length of time and it looks really cool i'm not really currently playing any real games um i <laughs> if anything i waste my time on it it's called um um Gold Miner Forever. Forever is the, it's also the name of the company that made it. It's just a mindless game I could turn on, play for five minutes, and put down. Um, if you like digging, <laughs> you know, all, all boys love to dig, dig in the dirt. I, I, I definitely did a, a ton of that when I was young. Um, it's pretty much the, the video game equivalent to doing that. Um, but yeah, one day I would love to sit down and play Cyberpunk when I have no no deadlines <laughs> or anything. Uh, but I did watch the, the animated show on Netflix, and that was, uh, I loved it. I loved it. Uh, it was a little much for the first 20 minutes. It was a little overload with visuals and colors. But uh, once they really got into the, the meat of the story, um, it was really good. I love the animation. I love the coloring. It was pretty good. Sin killer, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> and Tank goes, 27 had mediocre gameplay. But a A plus story. Good to hear. I 
I saw a video that was captioned something like, uh, they're doing an update that will change everything. Um, yeah, maybe maybe that was a dramatic title to the video, uh, but it was about it was about the game. <clears throat> I'm still needing to, to finish the Netflix series. Yeah, I really liked it. Like you know, the last episode or, or the way it, the story ended was eh, it's okay. It's an okay ending. Um, but I, I really just like the story for the most part. Uh, and the animation was excellent. Um, it's rare, it's rare that I see a style of animation that I get into because, you know, it's like, oh, a lot of days, you know, nowadays you get all sorts of different kind of animation and, and we're just talking strictly like. 2D or what looks like 2D uh, animation. And, you know, it's either of the meatball variety, <laughs> which is like a lot of the crap you see on regular network TV, um, you know, where it looks like it's hand drawn. It's just stupid family cartoon, you know, it's all really mediocre stuff. But, I love I love the way the you know cyberpunk uh, animation is stylized and colored and you know, it's kind of trippy at times. It's it's a lot of fun. CDPR has been hard at work fixing and improving their games. Ah, cool. Yeah, I listened to um, Alana Pierce. Alana Pierce. Uh, she's a YouTuber. She's a game writer. Um, and she does a, a podcast, Play, Watch, Listen, which she does with a voice actor, a game director, and a game composer. And um, that... I can, I can, I've already listened to every episode she's had. It's over a hundred episodes. Um, it's a great, great, great podcast. And I hope to find more kind of like it. You know, I'm, I'm not the gamer I used to be. I'm not, um, in, <laughs> in the industry of gamers, but you know, you never know, like, Maybe the opportunity will arise, and um, we'll see. Who knows? Who knows? So, uh, Tank Fur goes, Cyberpunk and Space Opera are my favorite genres. Uh, definitely. I love Space Opera. <laughs> and I, I got something in mind to do that, too. Followed by High Fantasy. Speaking of Dragon Rage. Simpson. <laughs> yeah. Did you pick up uh, Dragon Rage? Um, it's it's one of those books that I would love to add to my collection, but haven't yet. Uh, but you know, all the artwork I've seen is gorgeous. Jimmy, no Jimmy knows what to do. <laughs> so there's a lot of black I'm going to be filling in on this and um, it's going to be interesting <laughs> very interesting You know, I don't normally go this hardcore with constructing a piece, um, but I want to get into the rhythm of doing just that. 
in an attempt to improve my artwork. You know, because with it, without guidance, <laughs> I, can, I can get lost in, in doing some, you know, fancy inking technique and it could easily ruin the piece. So by, by being tighter with, you know, how I'm approaching a piece, which is also why I'm, I'm like sort of taking more time on it. I'm allowing myself to go step by step on this uh, without rushing it, uh, but also allowing breathing room, sort of like space in between me working on this, you know, I'll go and work on something else and come back to it and really like take in uh, what I'm doing differently and what, you know, what I could improve on. And uh, Tank goes, I did back during a range, got a merch pack with the book. Um, so that means you're ready and like it? I hope so. Give it a thumbs up. Because <laughs> uh, regardless, I'll, I'll pick it up for the artwork. But I'm sure it's, a, it's an intriguing story as well. And Tank goes, I can't wait until I can afford to hire an anchor. Me too, me too, man. <laughs> I hope everybody hires anchors. It's a, it's a dying it's a dying scale. Um, and so I have to do analog inks, but I'm not a fan of doing it digitally. Uh, I do prefer to pencil digitally, though. Yeah, so you know, it's everybody's trying different combinations of things. And Marvel goes, I, I ink traditionally just to sell the art, but I prefer digital because it's faster. Yeah, yeah. Once you, once you learn to program and become more adept at it, then uh, you know, I've I've seen you know I've seen Marv work digitally. Um. And who am I thinking of? Ryan, Ryan, uh, Ryan King? No. Oh, who is Ryan? Um, I'm blanking. It's, it's been a while since uh, we touched base. I need such base with Ryan. But uh, he's he's done Procreate, where he was inking in Procreate and coloring in Procreate. And uh, yeah, I'm, I got to revisit his videos. Uh, he's really good. He, he's done, you know, traditional art, but he's also delved into digital. Yeah, it's all preference and, and what have you and whatever makes the, the final project look best or whatever's easiest. Uh, our fastest for you to use to get the book done faster. Um, me, you know, it's like I, I'm penciling traditional, I'm inking traditional, and I'm going to color digitally. Um, now, mind you, I might use my tablets. Pearl, <laughs> pearl. <laughs> what am I saying? Um, to uh, to try some digital art creation, maybe. Um, but I, I don't think whatever I do, if I if I digitally pencil, digitally ink, whatever I choose to do, I might I might just do that initially as a form of laying things out um, and then to pencil it and ink it uh, traditionally after the fact. 
a sort of an extra stage. I, I've been thinking like, I love the way movies are created and they're created a thousand different ways. But if I was to um, create a comic where it's not the definitive, you know, like do, do page one, but it's not the completely finished page one. It, it's, it's a guideline. And, you know, it's like, say I pencil out the first issue, say it's 25 pages. Uh, I might decide to, you know, change up a couple of pages, you know, reverse the order or, or re-pencil a couple of the pages. Um, I'm thinking of doing that in regards to, I have a, a creation of mine called Nice Monster that's going to be a webcomic on my Patreon page. Uh, link below. Um, and I was thinking of doing it digitally or, or maybe maybe just loosely pencil and then go in digitally and, and tighten it up a little bit and color it. And use it as a guideline. Like this could be the finished movie. This could be the finished comic. Um, but now that I'm finished with the issue, I have a couple of ideas that will make it that much better kind of how you develop a movie. Like maybe I'll go in and do some research. <laughs> so I've been thinking about that. You know, because I'll, I'll never, you know, unless I, I get paid a thousand dollars a page or something, uh, I don't think I'll ever digitally ink a book for somebody. It's not, you know, I love traditional too much. Um, but to use it for coloring, to use it, to take advantage of it in different ways, um, might, might help me create better stories. So we'll see. Ryan Wynn. Yeah. <laughs> When uh, I was thinking of his YouTube name, which is Ryan, Ryan Inc. I don't know where I get Ryan Inc. Anyway, Ryan Wynn. Yeah. I'm blanking on his name. Uh, I mean, he digitally page one of chapter two and I'll link it also traditionally. So when you do that, do, do the two images come? out even close or it looks completely different um and i think i missed this one before my favorite hired work to do is breakdowns and a lot of neat books really need one oh my god yes <laughs> um yeah there's a lot of people that, that can definitely uh benefit from having somebody doing the, the breakdowns. And, you know, that's, it's been done in Marvel and DC to where, where they have, you know, like a new penciler, um, but they're not as seasoned and, and polished and, you know, uh, maybe still have a lot to learn and, and their layouts are just boring or, or confusing and they have a professional. Like, I think John, John Basimer as back in the day um done some of that where he'll go do breakdowns on a book um yeah it just you know penciler needs a little helping hand or, or what have you uh i'd love to do that myself I it's like um not because i'm an excellent penciler but because i i think i would have uh better layout ideas <laughs> than, than some of the comics i've seen you know, where, where it's just, it's just boring. There's no interest. There's no nothing dragging your eyes in, in places it should be dragged. And meanwhile, like, you know, anything I've penciled thus far, it hasn't been outstanding layout wise, but um somehow I think I think doing a very specific skill for somebody else is is a lot easier than to, you know. If it's an ingredient of something you have to do, it, it doesn't 
doesn't shine as much. <laughs> And uh, Marv goes, totally different. I like the digital mind. <laughs> there you go. Um, right now, I'm producing my series digitally, but that's okay because visual style is integral to the underlying story. Spoilers. <laughs> Sounds interesting, man. I'll have to have you on my channel at some point. I mean, you're welcome to come on now. I mean, not not. Not now, now, um, but uh, I could have me on next week. Uh, I have a guest later today. I have a guest tomorrow. Uh, I'd like to think I want to take the weekend off, but, you know, I do have to make money, so <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, but that doesn't mean I'll be streaming. It just means I'd be working. But, uh, yeah, you have intrigued me, Tank Ferret. Intriguing. But, yeah, it's it's really interesting when, when, you know, like editors or publishers get people uh, to do, like, partial work. And, and really, it, it's, it almost gives them... And the opportunity to really shine and, and go crazy, you know. Um, I mean, if you look at, like, Neil Adams has, has done some incredible layouts um, in his time. And, you know, he's super fast and super quick and um, has a really good design sense. Um, I loved his, like, he did a couple of issues of X-Men back in the day and loved his X-Men because, you know, the, the layouts and, I mean, everything's dramatic and really fun and, you know, he knows, he knows how to direct the eye. He knows how to pump, punch stuff up to be more dramatic. He's also a beautiful artist. Oh, cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, shoot me a link anytime. I'd love to hang out. Absolutely. And uh, Marv, it's been a while. We'll have to get you on, too. I'm kind of leaning towards having more guests on because it's, it's a lot of work just <laughs> streaming on your own and talking. And yeah, my, my mind wanders way too easily. Um, and I lose track of what points I was making. Always the case. Always the case. But yeah, uh, I'm probably... I'll stream a little more. Um... And uh, I'll make some lunch after this. And then I'll be streaming again later at 4 uh, with Vic. We'll talk about his creation. And uh, now Vic, Vic is a solid artist, man. If you, if you haven't seen his work, I'm really impressed. Um, you know, I'm, I'm impressed with by so many uh, artists I, I, I meet online and streaming with others. You know, like Marv does solid work. You know, Mar Marv is an incredible artist. Capable of, of so much. I look forward to grabbing his book one day when I'm not such a poor schlub. <laughs> uh, but it's all part of my plan. My my plan being to be broke right now, so I can work on a hundred different things, and I'll I'll be much more focused next year. 
with how I, how I do all this. The art in the uh, Scapel Zero Saga, starting with Apex Predator, is told not by me, but by one of the characters in the story, and the art style is indicative of their perception of the world. Ah, so if one character is drunk, then the artwork is constantly falling left and right <laughs> and blurry. And <laughs> that sounds cool, man. That sounds really interesting. Uh, and Marv says, anytime, buddy. I can hang out at this time. I'm not doing overtime anymore. Okay, cool. Well, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, well. I'll send you a message and we'll, we'll schedule. I'll schedule you guys uh, next week for sure. Do, 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 do. But yeah, I'm, I'm already getting hungry, so. Uh, Therefore, I lose I lose brain cells when I'm hungry. Tis the life of an artist. And I gotta figure out if I need to do some running around and. all kinds of things figure out where the rest of my schedule is but it being new york comic con this weekend i want to keep an eye on that um you know i, I saw i saw the uh the next ant-man and, and wasp movie trailer um it was leaked so I saw it in advance, um, and it was a bad copy, so <laughs> I would like to see the official release. Um, but that looks entertaining. Uh, you know, it's like Paul Rudd. I always love seeing, seeing him, and um, I believe it's the, the, the first... That's the first movie in this sort of next phase with the Kang the Conqueror storyline. So that should be interesting. You know, I, I know like Marvel movies and shows aren't, you know, nearly as strong as they once were at the moment, you know, at the moment, but still find their stuff entertaining and you get you get some really great content along some eh, mediocre content sometimes <laughs> tank goes in the next year or so be able to facilitate indie creators 2024 I launch Tank Ferry presents a heavy metal style periodical featuring indie creators. It's brilliant. I freaking love heavy metal at its height, of course, like when it was all European artists. Um, it was phenomenal. And that's that's a brilliant idea, man. I hope it's a huge success. Uh, to me, it sounds like something uh, many would love, like Marv right here. Lemon Pie, welcome to the channel. Welcome, welcome. Um, Tank goes, it breaks my heart to see a book not fun, but if I can help and get people to leg up, absolutely. Um, currently, this is something I, I promoted a, a bunch of times on, on Twitter. Uh, Dojo Comics has his projectile... Uh, what is it? Um, projectile something book that is currently crowdfunding has gotten 
maybe less than 10 days right now um, that isn't yet funded. So let's do this. Let's all get together on the same page to help promote somebody else's book. Uh, let's get Dojo Kuhn's book um, promoted. That's it. Projecto Reptile. <laughs> um, I, I, I would love to see it promoted. Um, I I think I spoke to jo, Dojo, but I, I got to get Dojo on here as well, uh, hopefully before his campaign run, runs out. Um, and Tank says, have you seen that bio war? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to speak to, to Vic. I, I've seen it and, uh, you know, I want to help him, uh, promote his project for sure. Yeah. And Dojo is a good dude. Yeah. It definitely, uh, seems to be the case. Like, you know, like I, I'm, sh I'm kind of shocked that it's not already funded because that guy does so much and it seems like he does so much for the community um i'm, I'm surprised a lot of the community haven't been helping him promote it as, as strong as he could be um, but you know i mean it, there's, there's a billion books being crowdfunded and Everybody's on their own sort of schedule, and I realize like some things fall through the cracks by sheer timing. <laughs> and uh, Lemon Pie is saying hello. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, share it out to your friends. I really appreciate those that do. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not as polished as some other YouTubers, not as entertaining. Uh, uh, you know, this is not me being down on myself, just realistic. Uh, but I, I love doing what I do and and being who I am, and <laughs> definitely YouTubing is one of the things. So, I was trying to grow my channel. Um, and eventually I'll, I'll get enough watch hours to where I can get, uh, whatchamacallit, monetized, super chats, that, that sort of thing. Get that going. So I'd become a, a YouTube millionaire. You know, because... Don't you all want to be a, meet, a YouTube millionaire or a YouTube billionaire? I do. <laughs> well, I'd rather make all my money through uh, the comic work I do. But, but it's good to have different revenue streams. Looks like I can make a couple bucks here, a couple bucks on Patreon, a couple bucks selling my own comics and couple bucks selling my own art, you know, all adds up so I can, I can buy that boathouse. <laughs> and then, you know, if I make a, enough money, then I, maybe I can buy the boat to go in the boathouse. I have no dream of uh, buying my own boat, but <laughs> rather just have a nice big house. So I'm, a, I'm in a small, tiny apartment right now, which is okay. I get by. Uh, yeah, this is shaping up to be some wild kind of piece. Um, yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Uh, 
<laughs> I'll go two hours, so I got a little time left. Um, <laughs> Marv says, come with, create a millionaire. Ah, yes. Nice queen. Say hi to lemon pie. So lemon pie, what do you, what do you do? Um, I think this is first my first time seeing you. If I'm wrong, then I'm sorry. There's just so many, so many people, so many people in the interwebs to keep track of. Um, oh, so the the old joke, one million dollars. Um, that's Mike Myers, Austin Powers character. I heard they're doing a, another sequel, possibly. <laughs> it's like really. It's like you know, I'll I'll go watch it. That's you know, this is pretty funny. I love Mike Myers. You know the the actor, comedian. Um, he's always been a lot of fun. So I'm definitely would support him doing a, another ridiculous Austin Powers movie. <laughs> One may notice that I speak well of someone or not at all. Too many internet fights. Yeah. I hear you, man. I try never to get in the middle of uh, internet fights. Although I'm not really <laughs> not really up on who's fighting who at the moment. Or I don't know anybody fighting anybody at the moment. Um, but yeah, you know, like... You get enough personalities, you know, people clash at times. It, does, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. That, that's, that's the thing with the internet. Things get blown out of proportion, but, you know, sometimes might be nothing at all. Like, definitely pe people use uh, uh, sort of click, clickbait titles on the videos because those get more views um but they could be talking about people and so things get blown out of proportion even when they're not necessarily crazy blown out of proportion You know, it, it was kind of like discussing it earlier, like, you know, when it comes to um, creators that we love and, and follow and, and whatnot, like, I, you know, when it really comes down down to it, I don't mind if a, if a writer or an artist is kind of an asshole, like, you know, I, I was behind um, Joe Casada for years. <laughs> Everybody always said, oh, Joe, you know, he's very critical of what other people's art. And he's this and that and the other thing. And it's like, you know, he's got an attitude for, you know, on him. And and Joe knows. Joe, Joe knows he's got a sort of like, you know, he's working in comics, but he looks down on other comic artists for, for a long time. And speaking of the devil, there's the devil flyer. Hey, Peter. And he says, nice Aquaman, you've hooked me. Map, map, map. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, what, I, what I'll probably do is, is you know, I'll, I'll sell the original artwork, but I'll also color it and make some, you know, less costly uh, some prints. And uh, 
<clears throat> as I've been mentioning, I want to do a whole slew of characters that I love throughout comics and, you know, even animation, movies, TV cartoons, streaming things, you know, wherever, wherever these characters come from, get my hands on them. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for two hours here, so another 10 minutes. Um, if anybody has any questions or wants to promote anything they got going on, you know, you don't need a wrench. You could just type it into chat. By all means. Just want to, just looking at the piece, trying to figure out what I want to tackle. Maybe I should just start filling in some black. Maybe I should do that. It'll be a little less confusing to look at. You know, sometimes when <laughs> when you map out the black areas and before you fill in the blacks, it looks awesome. And then once you fill in the blacks, it looks, it looks a little stiffer. <laughs> you know, that has happened. That, that has been a thing. Um, but then, you know, the uh, sort of safety is, is that, you know, it's going to be colored afterwards. So there's, there's still another step. Another chance to fix it. Uh, then you know if it's if it's a comic book page and is it's comic book art, um, there's always lettering can, can go on top of it and hide all your mistakes. <laughs> hey Tex, oh, that's not Tex. I should get Tex on here at some point. That crazy mofo. Mark Textier. All right, so this is all behind there. All right. When your hair is wavy and your water is wavy. You can start losing track of what's water and what's hair. Now this is water. Which I'll go in with some white after the fact and do some water spray here and there. So I was talking about reinforcing habits, like, you know, people can definitely do that, like keep you on track. If you, you know, you just, you just need to build up your systems of how, how well you, you keeping on track of the hundred things you do. And, uh, I would say like, you know, I'm only at 50% right now if I'm, if I had to give you a number stating how well uh, on top of things I am at the moment, uh, I have a lot of life challenges and, and you know, like I'm, a, I'm only here for a limited time, <laughs> you know, for the remainder of the year speaking, like, you know, which is throwing off my current schedule a little bit. Because otherwise, I would definitely plot out, like, I want to get this, this project done and this project done. But because I'm just here to the end of November, it's like, I'm really just going to get whatever I can done. And, you know, don't stress about it. More than anything else, I don't want to stress right now. <laughs> oh 
Um, so, Rex S. Are you watching Graham Nolan's 31 Days of Horror Streams? <laughs> You're up early every day. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it's like, while I, I got up early and I, I started watching your stream, it's not normally what I do because that's an easy way to to derail my day is to plan to, to watch other people's things right away. Uh, I need, need to get into my own rhythm um, more often than not. Uh, but I will check it out because Graham's – Graham's an excellent artist and uh, he does good work and I uh, love to see what he's creating. And uh, Tank goes, I usually mask my borders uh, with blue painter's tape. <laughs> that's, that's, I've seen that done. Uh, normally I, I already have the border there, but I have to clean my tools. So that's the only reason. I don't have a border there. Um, but, you know, frankly, I could leave it as is and just, you know, clean it up uh, in the art program. Uh, Marv goes, well, if I may, I'll get the uh, print and run of Chapter 1 Monday and I'll be taking care of the Kickstarter soon with very cool, cool, what is that? Oh, a T-shirt in it. Working on Chapter 2, Michael, Hunter of Men, coming out in February. Excellent. Excellent. If you don't know Marv or the Sin Killer, definitely go check it out. And uh, he says, I fully understand. Um, he reviews classic horror movies for 31 days. Ah, I get it. Is he drawing too or just reviewing movies? Now, now, mind you, like, I'm a bigger, like, I may speak of horror a lot uh, as if I'm utterly into it, but sci-fi is really my first love. Uh, But, you know, I am, I am more into horror nowadays when, than, than, say, when I was younger. There's a, a lot more good horror that I'm interested in. can watch and whatnot. Uh, all right, two-minute warning. Let's see. Um, if you haven't already, give this video a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Become a patron. Just, you know, look at it like a tip jar. Like you, you're <laughs> you su you supporting me ab above and beyond just uh, w watching every video I upload and, and stream here on my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, subscribe if you haven't. I don't know. Share share my videos out. That's it's always a, a plus thing to do. All that sort of jazz, jazz. Yeah, I, w I was thinking for a second I could do his hair with a quill, thereby making it a lot. A lot more thinner lines, but eh, you know, even though like his hair is blonde, you know, this it's more it's more like dirt, dirty blonde here, but that's okay. <laughs> let me let me ask you a question before I go. This this is this is an important question. Okay, so digital coloring. Uh it's not about if you like digital coloring or not, but this is a very specific thing. When a colorist colors the black line on a figure, on the hair, on objects, whatever it's, um, that's, um, now I'm blanking on that. That's color, drop color, whatever it's called. Um, when they do it 
specifically just with the hairlines itself. When they color the hairlines, like his hair is blonde. So everything's colored blonde, but his hairlines might be colored like an orange or a dark blonde. Do you like that or dislike that? Answer that question in the chat. <laughs> um, because to me, when it's just just the hair that's colored has a color outline rather than black outline, and the figure has a black outline, it looks like the hair is electronic color hole. That's right. Um, when when it's just the hair, it looks like the the hair is electric, and that to me never looks a hundred percent right. Or good. <laughs> EJB coming out with the uh, terminology. Uh, always good to see you, buddy. And what Tank Ferret says, smash that like button, hit that bell to receive all notifications. Um, and Tank says, I strongly dislike it for hair. Special effects, it works though. Yeah, like if it's fire coming out of somebody's hand or laser beams or anything like that, the hair color hole that makes sense. You know, it's 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 electronic or energy or fire or whatever. Um, but for hair, it just it just looks a little weird. It looks like you know, it doesn't look right. Um, and Mark says better to ink the hair lines and do the coloring underneath it. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So I'm, gl I'm glad that other people uh, uh, agree with me. Not because they agree with me, but because, I mean, you know, I've, I've seen it done so many times, and it was, it's like, really? Like, you think that's that looks good? <laughs> anyway, thank you so, so much for everybody who showed up in the chat and commented. Uh, we had a very active chat and some great people in there. Um, thank you for watching. I will be back um, at uh, four o'clock, so less less than three hours. Um, grabbing coffee, be right back. Oh no, that's an early comment. That's right. <laughs> I moved the chat. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for everybody who came by. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, like I said. Always good to see my friends. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to get a message a lot of you, and, and we'll get you on the channel. Uh, I want to stream with a lot more people and promote all they're doing as well. You know, I'm always working, but I want to see whatever other people are up to. So uh, love you all. Keep making art. Keep making comics. And.